a Stuart Double 10 V from the Netherlands. This is part 3, looking inside the other steam chest and setting the valve timing, which seems to be very similar to what I did at the other end. First thing to do, take off the exhaust manifold. And this time round it doesn't seem quite as fiddly because I've had some practice. And in no time at all the bolts are removed. And just like on the other end I'm using my very blunt surgical scalpel just to break the seal between the steam chest cover and the steam chest. In this clip I'm removing the pin from the valve fork and this holds the die block in place which in turn is able to move along the slot in the expansion link itself. Here's the die block and as before with the other end it's just a small bush. Die blocks are considerably different on larger engines where they're a shaped piece of metal that runs in the block, not just a round bush. The next part of the job is to remove the entire steam chest from the cylinder and I had to move the valve gear into a specific position to allow the expansion link to clear the valve fork as I remove the steam chest. Here's the valve and I'm going to turn this round and fit it the other way. Now there's some debate on this. Most people say, well, when you look at the plans and you look at drawings, it is fitted the way that it's shown. And I do agree. But by fitting the valve in this position, it can't uncover the ports fully. And I would really say, if the slide valve is really designed to be in the position that it was originally, why is the steam chest so wide? All I can say is I've done this on quite a few Stuart engines, the small double tens, single tens, S50s and 10Hs or whatever, and they all seem to run better with the valve in the other way around. So I'll just leave the argument there. I may be wrong, I freely admit this, but if anyone else would like to join the argument, then that's fine. I'm not going to answer any questions unless you're a Patreon supporter. If you are a Patreon supporter, you've already watched this video about two months ago. But if you're watching it for the first time as a Patreon supporter, don't forget I have a large collection of steam engines for sale. These will be going on the website very shortly. One's already sold and I think possibly another one has also. Back to this job, I'm reassembling the engine, I've put the valve fork back into the expansion link, I'm fitting the die block and I'm going to see whether the valve is in the middle when I rotate the crankshaft. This is quite important and both sides of this engine have to work together in harmony. To save some time though, I'm not going to show the fact that I did have to take it apart again and readjust the valve position, but here, for all to see, is the valve in the correct position, and I can now replace the steam chest cover, refit the bracket that holds the reversing lever, and when everything's bolted back together, I can start the adjustment of the eccentric. Here's the steam chest cover bolted back in place along with the bracket, and I just need to fit a nut in this position to stop the retaining arm from falling off. Time now to connect the compressed air line and see what happens. Well, it's not bad. I think I can better this. I think it needs some further adjustment. One of the valves is travelling too far. So now I'm going back to the other end to adjust the valve because I don't think it's in exactly the right position. That's more like it. It doesn't sound quite as wheezy and blowy as it did. I think I'll tweak the setting a little bit more. Now that is much better. It has a lot of power. It's time to give it another oiling because it's been running for quite a while. It's not the most silent engine I've ever worked on, but it's not a massive problem. This really does have power about 10 times the power it had when I got it out of the box that it came in. And the engine does not seem to be stalling at all. I open the air valve and it goes, it doesn't just sit there hissing. That's what it did before.
What I'm doing at the moment is notching up the engine, moving the lever back towards reverse. And this is a good sign that the engine is OK if it still runs when it's well notched up. In my videos, steam engines always sound a lot worse than they are, because, look, when I lift it off the soundboard, it's entirely different. So what have I done really to get this engine to this state from what it was? Well, I've turned the valves round as I've shown. I reset the position of the slide valves on the valve spindles, and then I set the eccentrics correctly. And in my opinion, no other way of doing this job would have been quite so successful. And that's it for this short series. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.